In the previous lesson, we saw how adding this final fillet feature to the edges where the head meets the handle led to strange results. The results are easier to see if the solid body making up the head is hidden. Now you can see what's happened. Since this model is made up of two solid bodies, the edges I selected when I created this fillet are not edges where the two bodies merge. Rather, they are edges that belong only to the handle portion. When I added the fillets, it's as if the head didn't exist. Just like there can be advantages to having multiple bodies, such as the result of the shell feature we saw in the previous lesson, there are also disadvantages. Fillets and other applied features, such as draft, chamfer, and shell, can only be applied to one solid body at a time. Because of this, if you wish to create a fillet across multiple bodies, as I want to do here, you first have to combine the bodies into a single body. To do this, you will use the Combine feature. You'll find the Combine feature in the Insert Features drop-down menu. You'll see in the Property Manager that the feature actually provides three types of Boolean operations, Add, Subtract, and Common. In this case, I'll be using the Add option to add two of the bodies together. When I click OK, you can see only one body is listed in the Solid Bodies folder. Of course, the fillet problem is not resolved yet. The combined feature, like any other, is time dependent. That is, it matters where along the feature tree it's added. What I should have done is use the rollback bar to go back just before the fillet was added and execute the combined feature there. Or, I can just as easily drag and drop the fillet to appear after the combine feature. When I do this, the fillet changes to show the result I expected. Now that we've seen the combine feature, let's talk about the other multi-body design techniques it offers. Here I have a part made up of two bodies. By using the combine feature's common option, you can generate bodies defined by the intersecting volume of two bodies. When I click OK, you can see the result is a single solid body. The last Boolean operation offered by the Combine feature is Subtract. As you can imagine, this performs the function of subtracting one solid body from another. Here I have a part made up of two bodies, one plate and a tube that runs through the plate. What I'd like to do is remove the volume of the tube from the plate. The plate can then be cut in half so that when the halves are joined together, a channel is formed through which liquid can pass. I'll again use the Combine feature, this time selecting the Subtract option. The main body will be the portion I wish to keep. In this case, that will be the plate. The body I wish to remove is the tube. I'll click OK. Notice the tube body is now gone. It is consumed in the process of creating the combined feature. A single solid body remains. And when I switch to a wireframe view, you can see the cavity left by the tube. To complete the design, all I have to do is separate the plate in half. One way to do this is to use the split feature. I'll begin by sketching a line that divides an end face in half. I'll exit the sketch and launch the split feature. The trimming tool will be the sketched line. I'll click Cut Part, select both bodies. When I click OK, I'm left with two bodies as I expected. If necessary, I could now use the Save Bodies feature to generate two individual part files and an assembly as we saw in the earlier lesson on the split feature.